<clears throat> Dear friends, whoever controls the media controls the mind. Welcome to the tenth episode of my career, my identity. Whether the media amplify the voice of the people or they create and propagate noise for the people in power. It's a question which is always in the air. We know that everyone communicates, relates and expresses. Language and communication skills are among the few major strengths of the students and youngsters of Delhi. But many are not clear about how to go about it. In order to develop the skills into professional careers, it is necessary to look into the skills, market spaces, organization, and strengthening of these capital for a profession in communication and media. An expert says, all I know is just what I read in the papers. And that is an excuse for my ignorance. What to communicate? I should have something to communicate. One has to work and analyze ideas to communicate. And we need the abilities and skills to communicate. Everyone needs to act as per the need at the time. So there are many abilities that are to be mastered in order to be a good communicator. Don't hate the media, become the media. Today, my career, my identity episode is on mass communication, language learning, media, and podcast. And we have the best available resource person to interact with us today. This special guest and expert is from the field of mass communication, who has clearly made his presence felt at national level with promising and valuable awards and designations. Mr. Dominic Thomas is a highly talented person who has achieved Agashwani Awards eight times, which is a national award as author and producer. Also, he has grabbed prestigious Gandhian Philosophy Award 2014 as author and producer. This superannuated gentleman received Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union International Award. He has also prepared modules for IGNO textbooks. His mastery and talent are proved in his contributions, services, and award-winning history. This is truly a unique genre. His academic achievements and awards reveal the nature of Mr. Dominic Thomas' promising personality. Mr. Dominic Thomas has great visibility and he has always entrusted with prestigious positions and responsibilities in the external services of All India Radio. The topics of his award-winning documentaries are the core concerns of our nation. Mr. Dominic Thomas' contribution, media organization skills, mass communication experiences, etc., are versatile in nature and are very useful for the youngsters to learn from. Dear Dominic Saw, welcome to this 10th episode of My Career, My Identity. Thank you, Father. It is said, people are sheep and TV is the shepherd. So the way to approach an event, person and news is not just an act of simple observation and working with available data. It takes discipline not to let social media steal your time, also to work with mass media. 
It's a penetrating adventure to the heart of a person, even the news to grind with media. In-depth analytical, innovative and research approach help one to skillful in writing, storytelling and content editing. These skills made Mr. Dominic Thomas an authentic word in media and communication management. Mastering the world of media and working on it. Developing the linguistic and mass media skills. Identifying one's talents and skills need social setup in which each individual is enriched with personal interactions with elders and professionals. The great thing about media is it can be voice to the voiceless people. And it can share my concerns with the world. Many youngsters have language and literary styles, but they need to develop more on this. Here is the opportunity. Dr. Benny Palati, Vidu Mithyalayum YouTube channel is providing the youngsters chances to interact with experts from the professional fields. Please tune to the YouTube channel every Sunday, 4 p.m. and subscribe the channel. We have today youngsters from different places of Delhi to interact with the expert. Welcome you all to this episode. All India Radio is a great place to check in and is helpful to analyze one's own skills. The phenomenal growth achieved by All India Radio has made it one of the largest media organizations in the world. So today we tune ourselves with Mr. Dominic to All India Radio programs and experiences to understand the linguistic media, mass communication skills and possibilities. The dark side of media is that within seconds, anything can be blown out of proportion and taken out of context. And it's very difficult not to be, not to get swept up in it all. Hold on to what we have, our skills, talents, and interests. Discipline them and let's grow. Whoever controls the media controls the culture. In this controlling exercise, we can be torch bearers of truth. Today, media is the ultimate equalizer. It gives a voice and a platform to everyone who is willing to engage. So let's all engage and mature. Welcoming everyone. And now over to Sir uh, Dominic Thomas. Sir. Thank you, Father. Uh, I thank you and uh, all the past participants for giving me an opportunity to interact with you. It is a privilege and honor for me. While you are sitting with the setters on, I am I am here in the God's own country or the most of your uh, homeland, Kerala, sitting uh, on a hot summer day. So that's the difference between you and us as of now. Now, coming back to the, our, our subject for the media and its interaction, I would like to start with a I am sure that most of you must have seen this uh, photograph somewhere in some newspaper or some television or radio or in social media where the first grandma of the world receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. So where did you see all these things? I'm sure you must have seen either you must have read in a newspaper or you must have seen it in a television channel or heard in a radio or on a social media. All these are forms of journalism, or what, what you call media work or journalism. So that's what when I come to the media, the, the, the major components or the parts of media are, of course, you can see yourself. When I, I was being a radio person, I'll start with radio, then television, then magazines, print media, newspapers, leaflets, billboards, all these are all these are forms 
of mass media communication and uh, one or another some one or another you you will come across in your life every day or every moment the moment you switch on your mobile one of these comes to you but what is its goal that this is the most important thing of course all of you know that if, if you switch on to a radio or a, any any media including a social media the first work, uh, the task is to inform you of course I, i think i don't need to explain more what is what does it mean by information then comes entertainment all the media channels of course in today's times if you say even some of the news channels entertain you more than giving you news then the third part of that is a education and education i would like to divide into two more parts which is normally we don't find in the paradigms of a goals of a media that is empower and equitize this i would explain with a small example when i say empower media can empower you we had an experience when i worked in uh, old india radio shillong we had given a series of programs on government schemes for a uh, rise for below poverty line people and when people heard this uh, they are all tribal area uh, we worked in a tribal area therefore the people are tribals they did not know that they are getting rice from the government free of cost or at a cheaper rate so next day they went to the ration shop and asked them the shopkeeper that give us your, give us our rice they asked how do you know that you have got your rice they said that our radio told us that uh, there is rice for us from the government so give us that so that is what you are i mean by empowering the people so we are telling them what they have got what what is the, what are their benefits that comes from government or any agency that is given to you you can take it and in that information is is more than education it's empowering them to do what what they are entitled so when i say conscientize we mean or what i mean is that there are issues there are constitutional rights there are many things which we have heard about it but we don't know what does it mean actually it is mean when you listen to a, when you read a column in a newspaper when you listen, when you listen to a discussion in a television channel or when you listen to a, a discussion or an analysis on a radio or or some kind of a interpretation and things that we get in the social media all these are efforts to conscientize us to inform us to guide us to the uh, uh, for a better place this is that's why i added uh, two go more goals that is empower and conscientize instead of the three goals that we normally speak about it now all the news that we have got here all that we hear in the media answers either all these five six questions or one of them who did it what did he do where did he do when did he do why did he do or how did he do all these six questions all the six questions are answered in a media where you listen to a you know news program or you listen to an entertainment program all these questions are answered therefore we say that the, the power of the pen is mightier than sword I mean, this is a very common adage which you hear everywhere so the pen has got more power than a sword a sword can break you but a, a sword can do a weapon can do much more than that now when you come to journalism or the mass media mass media works through journalism so it is they are so interlinked they are so connected we can't separate them from one from the another so when journalism is not a easy job it is a must demanding job and you have to be on the top of your gears all the time you cannot rest on laurels and when i have finished my work and i can go home it is difficult it is a 27 24/7 job you cannot do a part time journalism or you can do a, uh, maybe one hour two hours uh, uh, you dedicate your time for journalism no it is not it is it will to last you to spend your time 24/7 in a day and when when you are about to go home you might be asked by your editor to do a, another under story for them all these things are happening so because you have a, you have a duty as a journalist to to prepare your stories and decorate it with the photos videos or other journalism tools so that people can understand and they, you can capture the attention and interest of the people 
So the I would say the first skill that one should have uh, when you speak of uh, uh, being a journalist is know your audience. Well, that's the most important thing. You are when you produce, when you do a program, when you write a script, when you, whatever you do, your audience first. Not your not the owner or not all in the radio or uh, television channel first. Not even your critics first. Your audience, your listeners are always first and last. And no, everything everything else comes after that. You must have heard the famous quote of Francis Bacon, the famous essayist, who says that uh, reading makes the fullest man. If you are a, if you want to be a journalist, if you, if you want to if you want to be excel in, your, in this field of journalism, you need to be a good reader. You should read whatever comes across your uh, your uh, your way, maybe newspaper, novels, short stories, things that are that you can grab on because that will give you a lot of information. It will rekindle kindle your imagination. It will flourish your thought process. It will uh, make you to question things. So a lot, there are a lot of things that you can do by by reading it. If you don't read, I don't think you are able to write it well. Because reading is a must for a, for a journalist. And uh, when I think of myself, during my childhood, being we had a local library in our village, plus our school had a library. And I used to read and every, anything and everything that I used to grab on. But I never missed a chance to read things. Because reading kindles your imagination. Readings make you think more, to know more, because it will, all the information that, all that you read, it stores in your mind as a kind of a, uh, in your subconscious mind, it is recorded in you. So when the need comes, those thoughts, those uh, that which you have read it in your childhood, all things come back to you, and it will help you to do a better programmer and uh, to be a good journalist. Along with reading, what's important is research. You have to, Research is very important because you cannot make mistakes when you write a story. When you write a new story, you cannot make mistakes. You have to be correct. Because if you are wrong and your credibility as a, as a journalist, as a writer, as a producer goes very badly. I remember uh, you, you must have heard about uh, Mr. Kailash Satyarthi who got the Nobel Prize a few years ago. And so when the news broke out, all the channels that was uh, in Delhi though in those days, they all rushed to his home. The, the correspondent, the reporters, everybody rushed to his home to get his bite, to, get out, to, to know what he says, to get his reaction. What happened was that the, most of the journalists who reached his house, they are not even, they are never seen him. They don't know what his work he's doing. They have no idea about him. And they rushed his home. And one of one young journalist from a channel, I'm not naming that channel, because I was there, present there, uh, asked Mr. Satyarthi, sir, we want to talk to Dr. Sk uh, Mr. Kailash Satyarthi, who got the Nobel Prize. Without knowing that, uh, they are talking to him. So that kind of... Uh, he was telling us that story and laughing because they have come to me without knowing who I am. So, because that person, the, the, that journalist from that channel had no idea who he was, therefore they made, the, they made this big blunder, I would say that, because they have not done the homework. Of course, the homework is a must when you do for a program. You have to be prepared and you should know what, whom are you going to talk to and uh, what you see. At least minimum, minimum information is required. You cannot do with that without research, without homework. So these are the two, uh, some of the skills, or I would not call it they are, they all these are skills, because more than that, this is a kind of attitude and aptitude which you as a journalist or you are aspiring journalist should develop because without this quality of uh, reading or research or homework, you will not be able to succeed in your uh, mission. So there are, I, I have, though I have named all these as skills, I would, I would not call them skills as I said earlier, more than, more, they are all attitudes and attitudes. 
first and foremost when it comes to uh, be a good producer good writer good journalist we need a good imagination imagination of course you know what it means thinking that with that which does not exist as of today in this world it might exist it might come tomorrow so you imagine that or a, a kind of a because those quality of imagination comes to you when you read when you hear things when you learn things all those things come so when you imagine for example you can imagine that suppose if shahjahan comes today to make another taj mahal what would how would he react to today 21st century or if uh, those who read the bible know that noah's ark if noah is god is god has asked noah to produce or to to create or to uh, to make another ark today this time how will he do this work because you can make it a satirical beautiful this is an imagination that we i have got it with me so today's time with all the environmental laws or the all kind of laws will he succeed in making all the uh, will shahjahan succeed in making a taj mahal will noah will ever be able to make an ark that's an imagination but which you can put in the real situation that comes to the point of creativity creating something that is that which is not uh, That that already there is giving a kind of a new color. Though as as I said earlier, this imagination gets into reality or into into a fruitful picture in creativity. You are create things. So I remember we had created a. I don't know how many of you have heard about the the attack on Indian Parliament way back in 2001, and uh, we were asked to produce a program the next year on the subject terrorism. so we decided that we will do a, a do short documentary on the attack on parliament but how to do it in a new new way what we did was that i from my experience i'm telling you that we interviewed all the people connected with that attack who has seen that act and as eyewitness accounts we recorded almost 7 to 8 people including the security persons the then vice chairman of rajya sabha dr nazma heptullah because it happened just outside her room then the journalists who covered it and after recording them we had a lot of a lot of materials what we did was that we recreated the entire attack using without any script we recreated it using only this interview sound bites and sounds if sound effects So it was first twelve minutes of the program had hardly any narration because it was entire attack was recorded. You could see as if it is happening in front of you through sounds. We created that the attack on Indian Parliament. Then of course the next oh, six minutes uh, to the final part was an analysis why it happened and how it happened. Then of course there we had a lot of script. So that is what it means creativity, creating your imagination that you create it. and again next point which i would do say is that innovativeness because something that is novel new always because there are a lot of stuff in the world in the media world which everybody has seen everybody knows it you have to create something that doesn't exist here comes uh, my best experience in the year 2017 we had a a show with, in connection with the uh, international dawn chorus day in and we are associated with the radio ireland they were um, in, they invited 14 to 15 countries across the world to join them and we were all india radio was one of them and they gave us a chance and uh, we were the only country from asia to join that and uh not an exaggeration i had the privilege to be the, the first producer because all india radio had never done such a program because how can we speak of don chorus means the morning singing of the birds how can we broadcast live when a bird sing it is a very very risky proposition because the birds are not in your control they may sing or they may not sing and so it was a tough task for us to find the place and um, find the birds so that we uh, but we did it very well at the end of the show after 14 countries They, the radio Ireland told us that all India radio stole the show out of 14 countries. So we were very happy because we did it in a summer day from a oh, bird sanctuary near Agra, near uh, near Agra, a place called Kitham. 
and uh, of course uh, later on if somebody asks me something more about it i can uh, answer you the how we did all those things it was it was an awesome job a teamwork done together but it was a totally innovative work it was never attempted by anyone which we did it and we must succeed it not not my merit i would thank the birds for uh, making it the program a success not myself then now we always hear this word that you think differently how to think differently we come across so many things in front of us we do hear a lot of things and from the from your experience from what you read from your knowledge that you have gained from your different parts of uh, different lays of your life you can think differently i will give an example again from my own experience of course uh, all of us have heard of, uh, know about the uh, 14th august 9th, 15th august 1947 india got independence we know that and we are all born after independence so when radio or television or anybody makes a program on uh, independence what we normally do we make a history of india from 19, 1857 the first war of independence to the independence in 1947 90 years history is summarized and make program this is a routine thing that we do so in the year 1997 we decided that uh, there was a 50th year of independence silver uh, the golden jubilee we wanted to do something different because the people who listen to us in those days are people who are born after independence they don't know what happened that time so we took a challenge that's what i'm looking to think differently what happened on that night of 14th august 1947 only that one night from 9 night 7 pm because the, the assembly of the constituent assembly of india had its meeting to take the power of india on 14th august midnight from 11 to 1 o'clock that night 1947 i am selling about the, some some years old story so we wanted to know what happened that night only not the what happened that their history of freedom, freedom movement what happened that night only so we we went on as uh, research and we got enough materials we had even i even see like i very preciously hold those recordings and their recordings of 1947 and for august 14 1947 night uh, procedure is recorded in uh, by all india radio in those days of course the quality of recording is not very high because the technology was not very high those recordings we used and i read the newspapers of 1947 of august 14 15 16 to get information part hard up and how it happened so we after that we produced a program called while the world slept while the world slept so that was my first uh, when the program was produced and we even had the midnight clock striking 12 ending british era and beginning of new indian era it we had that we that clock strikes we have with us original one so we used that to produce a program and we met lot of freedom fighters to see to find out how did they celebrate that day that night to, uh, on 1947 so this program was uh, nobody thought of this this uh, this kind of an uh, approach to it and we did it and uh, that is first time i got a national award this, this program gave me first time in way back in 1997 so that is because i thought differently from what what we are normally what we normally do then you should have always as i said no you should always a investigative and inquisitive mind your mind should never be satisfied with what you hear and you must always look for something uh here what investigation i did a program in the year 2003 i was given a subject called internet growth of internet do a program and i had a very strict boss she had a lady very very strict and she used to say that do it no question of no doesn't arise there and she called me one fine morning and said do this program and to be honest i did not know what internet is those days i had no idea well we heard about little bit here and there internet because uh, it was not popular in india but we had to program that is that too for international competition so the question is that i am competing with a 
with countries who have developed internet in their own country or their own their own nations and we are i am here with who doesn't even know how to do a uh, how to do a google search so doing a program so university one in the, and the investigative mind in me forced me that and i have a habit of uh, keeping all the paper cuttings those days we didn't have internet like you, today we have got it we have don't have a storehouse we didn't have a computer only few people had a, even a desktop computers those days in 2002 2003 so i have a habit of uh, since as a part of my job or as a part of my interest i used to collect lot of uh, paper cuttings in a file one by a huge stack i had i had three or four files with me and where some interesting stories are kept safe so when need comes i can use it so when i she gave me ultimate my boss that you should do a program i went home thinking what to do how to do i had no idea then when i reached home i took one of my files and there i had a, i had a small story in around 50 words 60 words which says that uh, uh, a place in uttar pradesh a village where there are no roads no electricity but there is internet this it is a very 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 it was give me a shock to me how can we have different internet without uh, electricity without roads so i tried to find out more about that and i found it was a project by iit iit kanpur and uh, we went to I mean, to cut the story short we went to iit kanpur they helped us we went to the village and i saw the person with my own eyes how internet is used by people using the battery backup they are on a tera internet sir kept on a tera like a vegetable tera there are people that are moving around with the wifi things it is all supported by um, iit ministry and um, iit kanpur and a, a project called media lab asia it was by them and on based on that we produced a program called bridging distance how this distance is produced that is a program which gave me an international award way back in 2003 when a uh, and a journalist has to be very very patient and uh, you have to be persevering it because it is not very easy to get to be, uh, especially when you want to interview people they won't easily give you a chance you have to you have to persevere with it the i did a program on aruna shanbag which was uh, a, a documentary produced uh, and again it went for international competition which reached up the finals among 80 countries in the world four entries were chosen for the finals and this was one of them this i knew this story in the year 2008 but i did the production of that the story based on that production on that story production was done in 2011 i patiently waited 3 years because that there is a reason why i waited because the the euthanasia case was going in supreme court of india i wanted the court to give its uh, its final verdict to know final outcome so that i know the full story without any bias so that i can do a program on that so th this is what made me wait, patiently wait for 3 years uh, to do that program again we interviewed uh, archbishop desmond tutu the famous uh, south african uh, uh, reformer uh, and he is a nobel, nobel laureate for peace and he visited india and the year uh, i don't exactly remember the year so we need patience because i waited for him 6 hours in a hotel in delhi for him to come back to give me an interview and at the end i got interview at midnight around 11:45 pm he gave me a chance to speak to him but still that's what i mean by perseverance and patience that is a that is a must for us when i say flexibility when you do a story when you do when you want to do a story what happens that you cover with a certain number of questions to ask a interviewer to ask the person whom you want to interview you ask him those questions what happens is that most of the time he you may not get the answer that you want from him or so therefore you should to allow him to speak flexibly you if you have a 10 minutes program for a program you have to do a 10 minutes short interview you interview him for 30 40 50 minutes if he permits it because we don't know when when and where the best will come out from him 
We don't know that. Sometimes the question which you ask, you may not get the right answer. In some other questions, some other sub questions, when you ask him, the maybe the best comes out from him that time. So the, wait for that best. So flexibility. You don't know. I will interview him only ten minutes. When ten minutes are over, sir, I finish your work. I am going by. No, be interviewing thirty, forty minutes. Then you edit him. When you come to your room, when you come to your uh, uh, console, when you come to your room, when you come to the editing machine, you edit and make it 10 minutes. That's okay. But when you do their work, you do it for 30, 20, 30 minutes. Don't stop that. Now, of course, teamwork is very important. And without it, one cannot do it. Uh, one person cannot do all kind of work alone. So you, you have to be that. Uh, I think everybody understands that part. I did not explain that much more. Then comes alertness. Being a journalist, you have to be alert what is happening all around. If suppose, especially if you are if you have been deputed to do a coverage of an election broadcast, election result broadcast, or if you are doing a sports com a sports commentary, what we need is that you have to accurate color, accurate score, accurate result of election. You cannot make a mistake there. You cannot. That's why you have to be fully always alert. And uh, Alertness will help you to do the best or the latest in your newspaper, in your in your bulletin, in your television news, or in your social media postings. Well, if you read the newspapers of Delhi, of course, I was there. I have seen it. You except the one a newspaper Hindu. All other newspapers are normally include news which is uh, which comes around 10, 30, 11 p.m. the previous day. And if you look at Hindu, you will find always a news item which comes even up to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. in the morning. Well, they, they keep themselves awake and alert for the latest. That's what a newspaper is, because they provide the latest thing. That, that's the only newspaper I have seen it. Then comes, when you interview people, they will tell you a lot of things. Where we are telling facts or fiction, it's a very difficult question. Because to find out where a person is selling fact or whether it is the fiction. Uh, in the year 2009, when I went to Nagaland to, a, to do a program, I met a person called Mr. Theo. He told me that he has seen Subhash Chandra Bose face to face. And he gave me a, brief, a good description of him to me. And of course, I recorded him. And uh, at, when I met that Mr. Tayo, he was 80, 83 years old. And uh, and it's a fact that uh, Subhash Chandra was along with the uh, Indian National Army and Japanese Army marched towards India, and he reached up to up to Nagaland. That's a fact. That's in the history. Now, when he told me all these things, because uh, from the description of the photograph of Subhash Chandra Bose, we can also have this kind of a, a story cooked up by you. That's possible. Therefore, I could not fully, I recorded him for 10, 12 minutes, all that he said about Subhash Chandra Bose. When I, when I came back to the studio before broadcasting, I checked with the, all the possible historians, that the year in which, the time in which he had visited India, Subhash Chandra was, was he there in that time? Then I, I tallied with this man's age to find out where he is. And I knew where his village, this man's village was, the one who gave me interview. His village his, uh, was, uh, I know the name of the village, and where did he visit that place? So then I tallied all those things, only then I, I found that there's a lot of truth in what he said. This poor man was hissing. I want only 10 year old boy those days when Subhash Chandra Bose came to my village. So that's how we are check facts, sir. We don't make any mistake. That's very, very important because you, you cannot uh, have a cooked up story for news or you cannot have a cooked up story for anything else. Facts and fiction has to be very well. Same is the case when I met the Gandhiji's. Uh, Private secretary, who is still alive, is 98 years old man, Mr. Kalyana from Chennai. He was the secretary to Mahatma Gandhi from 1944 to till his death. So he has a very vivid memory of Gandhi. But whatever he said, oh, actually I rechecked again with other people, the historians and others, so to, to ensure that whatever he said was correct, because he had given a lot of interviews. He must have improvised himself to give a better picture of Gandhi. 
So I wanted to know, confirm that. That's what I mean by you are always ability to, you should have the ability to check, to find out facts from the fiction. Then being a Delhiite or being a Carolite born Delhiite, most of you are in Delhi, you have, we have a culture of our own. But as a journalist, you will be asked to deal with other cultures, people from uh, tribal areas, people from rural background, people from uh, variety of variety of backgrounds we, we come across. So if and you may have a, you may you cannot judge them with your culture, with your background. Because you have you have grown up in a particular style, and there, that may not be with, with others. So that therefore you have to be sensitive to others' cultures and lifestyles. And when it comes to next, when whatever you do, you should have a good critic or somebody to evaluate you whatever work you do. Because you may not, you may make a mistake. When I did a program on on uh, Titus, the Gandhi's foot soldier. A man, a, a, a only Christian to march with Gandhi during the Dandi march in 1930. After producing the program, I met the director of Gandhi Smarak Sindhi in Delhi to find out all about him, and I made him hear my program so that to find out that to know his viewpoints, to find out whether I have made any mistake or any wrong thing, uh, wrong statements are in my uh, program or not. Then comes uh, good good communication skill and com and uh, command over language. Again, it's understood unless you have good communication skill, you cannot uh, brief the people whom you are talking to. So you have to tell. Suppose you go for an interview to a person, you have to brief him. You have to tell him what you what you what what I want from him. Only then he will respond to you. So that you should have good good convincing command over uh, good communication skills and command over language is very important. I, uh, the command of our language comes with the one, my experience is that, I would say that if you are writing in English, I would say think in English. I would say that word. You, you say, what do you mean by think in English? Most of the time, what we do is that our thought process in our mind is in a particular language. Then we translate in our mind by using our brain and we come, come out of that. If you are able to think in a language in which you want to write, if you are writing in Hindi, think in Hindi. If you are writing in English, your thought process, your uh, your um, entire work in your mind and head should be in that language. Then what happens is you get the best out of your script. You are able to go. It comes from your heart, from the heart and mind together. Otherwise, when you translate from Hindi to English, it comes from your head. You know, intellectual capacity comes. Your mind is on our mind is thinking in mind's thought was in Hindi, or your uh, your outcome is in English. Therefore, therefore, I would uh, always say that think in English. Whatever thought process in your mind, think in that language in which you want to write. If you are writing in uh, Telugu, write uh, think in Telugu. If you are writing in Malayalam, write in, think in Malayalam. Don't translate as far as possible. Then only you can develop your language. And then now comes the writing part. The, the, I would say there are three kinds of words which are, we can read in the screen itself. Words that we know, words that we should know, words that we know, we don't know at all. So when you write a script, don't use the third kind of words. Means words that nobody knows. Nobody knows, there's no use of uh, writing that one. And the second kind, there's words we should know, use sparingly. And always use the words that we know. Then comes vocabulary, use the right words, correct words, make short sentences that should be precise, not very, very long. One, one paragraph should not be one sentence. Complex uh, sentences should not be written when you write for a, uh, any medium. And attention to grammar, punctuation, spellings, because all those matters very well. Uh, this, of course, you know it very well because if being a student, you, are, you have been familiar with all those things. Now, this is something you need Jack of all trades and master of none. That is with the, that is with the media because you should know every, something about everything. In uh, well, I think most of you know uh, Hindi. That I use one word. A journalist should know from Galib, the famous Urdu poet, to Gobar, the cowder. So we say you should know Galib to Gobar, and you should have a knowledge of everything. Little bit of everything is required. 
unless you know unless you have a because when you are in a newspaper when you are in a television channel when you are working somewhere else you will not always get the, the field in which you are expert is you will get uh, they will give you if you are a economist or if you write an economic writer they will give you a job in some other field also they will ask you to cover sports they will ask you to cover politics they will ask you to cover environment they will ask you to go, oh, 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 go to some other field so then what happens is that unless you have a basic idea of those things you will not be able to survive it's so fine so it's we should be a jack of all trades then uh, from my experience i would say that ignorance is a blessing if you are willing to learn because if you don't know a subject and if you are if you are if you are ready to learn about it study about such a and write a script on it you will write from the basics not from the to the top from the level from the lowest level you write because the, the your listeners you are right your audience your readers they are like you or maybe no no even they are not level it may not be even up to up to your level therefore you will write from the very basic thing that is need i i would uh, give an example of uh, uh, doing a program on uh, ms subalashmi with the famous uh, carnatic singer and bharatanatyam awardee and the first indian to sing in united nations in 2016 was her uh, birth centenary she died in 2004 so i have no knowledge of music i am not a musician at all but i had love for her music her music especially her vengadesha suprabhatam which you hear from the temples across india on every morning therefore i was really interested to do a program on her because of her divine voice i know nothing but i did a program not one minute Now, as, as long as 90 minutes to be broadcast across India on all channels of all India radio in the honor honor birth centenary day in 16th September 2016, 90 minutes program I produced it, and I simply titled Divine Maestro. And of course, later on I edited that program and made it to 28 minutes. It was a tough task, and I sent it for a competition, which fetched me another award. see i am doing a subject which in which i had no knowledge that's why the ignorance is a blessing but i had an interest to learn learning will help you and when you come to when i say in depth knowledge of a uh, chosen field of journalism that means that where you are a, you are a radio journalist or a tv journalist or a social media journalist or a magazine writer or a columnist should have in depth knowledge of that all the aspects of that particular field should be known to you you can you cannot have a half baked knowledge there this is a rest of three things are a, I, i will put together because when i say rumination and chaining of ideas see as i told earlier creativity imagination from imagination comes creativity from creativity comes ideas so when ideas come to your mind what is uh, the way i used to do is that when the idea comes to my mind i live with that for days together when i sit when i walk when i move around when i go to bathroom when i sit here when I, whatever it is this idea will be always recurring in my my ears and my eyes I, though i i am not seeing i can see this is in me, this is within me when even when i talk to others this is in the subconscious mind is always running so when the pro- when i write a program before writing it and uh, this like uh, when you when you cook a fish what you do you marinate and keep it for yourself for some time to get it uh, very well ready so it will be more tastier when you cook it same thing is idea should marinate within you and uh, when you do a and, uh, another habit which i have used to keep was that i used to keep a in a no when i when i use a access place a, a notebook and a pen sometimes when i uh, just it looks funny but uh, when i take bath or when i when i am in my toilet some ideas do come so as soon as i come out i write what else, what thought came to my flashed my mind those time i just uh, note down there and keep it there because after after few minutes i might forget i keep it in mind and when i come that's what i i, I mean by rumination and chaining up ideas so when a, when you write a documentary your entire documentary is ready in your mind frame by frame is ready and then you put in your papers at the end you put in your papers because it's already in your mind you have already made it in your mind only written writing part is left out it's very easy to write after that 
when i say social empathy and self responsibility we, we are, of course we are all social human beings we are lot of stories india is a sto- uh, um, land of what you say lot of opportunities for uh, for journalists you don't have a you don't need to look for stories. plenty of stories lot of wonderful wonderful stories you find out all across uh, the country and um, for this all these are wonderful stories positive stories in this area era of negativity when you are the news and media is full of negativity this will help you to do a positive work last but not least you must fall in love with your job you you should not it should not be a job because it pays me let me do that one you should you must love it you must uh, uh i to be honest from my side i when i was i joined all in the ready from a school from being a school teacher one of the main idea was one of the main concern for me was to get a secure job i i will not uh, i will not say that i i didn't have that such idea but when i joined this, uh, the, the organization i simply fell in love with my job and it was it was a passion for me i i i i, I could not think myself separate from there even now i i am not separate from there i feel it so that kind of a passion and enthusiasm you should have for your job now i will come to the, uh, now you can read yourself the major courses that's available within the country uh, within india the courses that one can if anybody who wants to be a journalist can us look for some of these courses like ba and ma mass comm and journalism multimedia media studies uh media management and all there are diploma courses in all the above that we have seen here that's uh, and i missed one more thing here there is a there are some universities of india like manipal university and karuna university they give a course for btech in media technology that uh, i have not mentioned it here btech in media technology again it's connected with the journalism work is that also in words give it uh, more of hardware part of the uh, technical part of the media work plus the software part the both part hardware and software we call it in our terms hardware means all the technical part software means all the content that you write and you produce it now i'll come to some of the major uh, uh, institutes that uh, that in in india we have got which uh, where, where we can you can get admission and uh, admission to most of these institutes which i have mentioned here are through entrance exams and uh, the all those courses which are called post graduate diploma courses which i have mentioned here they are all uh, available for graduates only and there are few courses like uh, like um, um, but the, the delhi amiti they all give uh, those who have completed plus 2 through an entrance exam they they allow you to join it but here indian institute of mass communication has got six centers across india and they have journalism the three courses they have got it journalism in hindi english malayalam uh, urdu and odia the radio and tv journalism addressing populations and all details you can have is available in iimc it is short form it's called iimc indian institute of mass communication there's a one that this india's most premier is a government run institute india's most premier institute of journalism then another institute which is again in delhi that is a, all of you are know about jamia university they have courses for masters and diploma degree in a, including phd they have got in mass comm and journalism which you can i think you are able to read yourself my ma in mass communication convergent journalism development journalism visual effects and animation then they have a diploma courses in broadcast technology uh photography visual communication acting and a mass media by hindi department of the university plus they have a phd also then now when you come to it this uh, this is a iimc and jamia give us courses for mass uh, journalism and mass media and there are few institutes in india which give um, even television journalism there is a fti ftii pune you must have heard about this you know india's most premier uh, uh, media institute for uh, television and they have a courses in uh, uh, film wing and tv wing they have two wings they have direction screenplay writing cinematography editing sound recording I means so all the different uh, all the aspects of film making is there 
they have courses for that they have one for film being they have one for television being and of course all again here an admission is through uh, entrance test and an interview and a discussion they are is very very tough to get interview uh, to get the admission these institutes because they have very limited seats also and there we are under institute which you have got is called as satyajit ray film and television institute kolkata they have mostly post graduate programs of 2 years of duration cinema screenplay writing editing cinematography sound recording producing for films and television and animation cinema along with that they have, they also have got a 2 years post graduate program in new media that which you call electronic and digital media social media which we have got now they have started a new course and they are they are the only one in india uh, who give this kind of a good uh, this kind of a new media or social media or the new age media courses others don't do much of that there may be some private institutes uh, which give but uh, i'm not sure the how the quality is and the last uh, known institute in india is called kr narayan national institute of visual science and arts it's in kerala they have got a, a post graduate programs in uh, direction script writing cinematography editing audiography and undergraduate program in animation and visual effects and acting so this is in uh, again it's run by government of kerala institute very few very limited seats and a good number of seats are reserved for uh, um those who are those who are native or domicile of kerala and here is a list of uh, some of the very good major media institutes i not rank them i just throw them in a randomly the year and uh, of course the asian college of journalism which is run by some eminent journalists across the country they are the one who are started this one then symbiosis institute many of you may be hearing about it then saver institute and delhi university has got few colleges which have got journalism mass comm courses then department of communication in hyderabad university then christ university in bangalore indian institute of journalism bangalore school of communication manipal university that is in manipal karnataka then manorama school of communication which you call mass comm that is in uh, kerala so these are the uh, there are many more but when you choose an institute what you have to think and keep in mind is that uh, you are choose an institute which has got a placement facility because i uh, plus internship facility internship where you get a uh, online training peer training and uh, especially asian school of college of journalism or masco they have got their own media they are all media houses of their own even some newspapers like hindu they all take interns most of the newspapers take interns for a short period some paid most of them are unpaid even all india radio doordarshan all the private tv channels they all give opportunity to do um, journalism students for internship so if you get a, you must grab that uh, that opportunity you should never miss that because you are getting hands down experience you are asked to simply as if uh, as if you are put in a hot water to and uh, put in a uh, put in a pond and ask to see they will give you lot of opportunities to produce stories from your own side especially hindu but to get into their internship is difficult they give a chance even the stories uh, prepared by indians are even published by newspapers their news, uh, hindu newspaper produ- uh, publishes they write in, in the bracket that this is this story is by a indian working with our our, our newspaper so internship is a must plus those which are if you are if you are go, very good internship with them even the chances of getting job with them is uh, easier because they know that they already know you and they offer you that time now when it comes career opportunities there are a lot of opportunities are available for uh, career but things have changed these days nearly we had a television journalism we had a print journalism we had a radio journalism or even internet journalism now all the newspapers in india or not only in india across the world there's a convergence of it we are where a news story is supported by a video or a photograph or a audiograph audio audio bite sound bite this is happening this we this is what we call convergence of journalism 
this is happening these days uh, in a large scale manner and all the newspapers are having their own uh, even if you um, open their website of newspapers you will find that uh, any stories are, are supported by a video sometimes a print video we can go to print video and sometimes even audio is there so it is no more a uh, that the very there is no com compartmentalization or uh, separation that does all come together uh, therefore we, we have to be prepared for all to be uh, um, should be should have a mastery or an information knowledge about little bit about everything about audio video editing uh, audio editing and writing skills all these things are required and uh, traditional jobs which you have got is in the, in the country in the media say if you are in a print media or the, you can you can join them as a reporter you can join them as a correspondent you can join them as a um, desk editor you can join them as a sub editor you can uh, you can join them as a feature writer there are lot of varieties of uh, uh, opportunities are available in the print media and audio audio and video media and at the same time there are we have got news agencies like uh, asian news international you must have heard about ani or pti press trust of india or uni united news of india all these are news agencies which feed news to uh, major television channels radio channels and newspapers so they even reuters the famous uh, reuters also take a lot of students they are they have a center based in bangalore and uh, you are a journalist a good a, a person who has got a english literature background they take them so that they are they are all because if you have a good writing skills and the skills which i have which i have explained earlier if you have some of them they will they will definitely hire you but you need to and a journalism degree will be an added advantage there so um, besides this being a, um, a graduate in, journal, in media you can even have a now almost all the ministries all them all the embassies all the council offices in the country they have got a public relation executives public relation officers working for them so they need um, all these fields require people who have got a, a skill and expertise in language and journalism background now the journalism like other field are comes so much specialized these days and you can even if, if you have got a um, humanities degree in maybe in journalism or being a fine economics or environmentalism and environment, international trade or uh, any of these in politics political science social science sports or 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 if you have got a degree in geography if you have got a degree in farm or if you are a bsc agriculture all those people they have got a lot, lot of opportunities for journalists in that field also because they are all specialized every newspaper has got a specialized special uh, specialist special correspondents for all these areas you can um, read yourself the broadcast telecast journalism financial journalism environmental journalism and the, the, the list is endless so there are so much of uh, different fields that has been opened up for journalists these days again apart from the uh, uh, in the civil service also there is a there is a post uh, those who have got uh, lower ranks in civil service in the interviews and after final selection uh, they are got it is it, they are given a service called allied service indian allied service iaas indian allied service in which one of them is indian information service and information indian information service is a part of civil service examination for ias and if ifs and ips so there's those who are selected in that they are posted in different ministries of government of india as um, as their spokesperson as their uh, media coordinator so those jobs are also available even civil service also has got a uh, chance for media persons besides that advertising advertising industry you can be if you have got a <coughs> command over language you can be an interpreter especially uh, when uh, 
foreign dignitaries, you must have seen when foreign dignitaries visit India and meet the Prime Minister or President of our country, you will find somebody sitting behind them, just behind them and uh, uh, speaking something in their ears. So they are interpreters because they, they know the languages of both of them. Suppose a Russian Prime Minister come, uh, the President comes to India, Indian Prime Minister speaks in Hindi and Russian interpreter knows Russian as well as Hindi. So he explains his president. Indian interpreter knows Russian as well as in, uh, Hindi. So he, in, he interprets whatever the pr president of Russia spoke in Hindi to you know, so Russian to Indian president, Indian prime minister in Hindi. They are called interpreter's job. And the such jobs are very high demand these days because with the globalization, with the so many industries coming out from across the world. So those things are of a high demand these days. Then we have got a marketing brand profession, writing brand, uh, different brands for different companies. And uh, you, I know all of you have uh, bought things from Amazon or Flipkart and, and, and so on. Then you find a lot of uh, they, the, the product explanation is given there. It's all run by somebody who has got a knowledge about all these things. They are, they are doing it this one. So for that, writing a very attractive product details you require a person. So they are called technical writers, the copywriters in uh, advertising, all those uh, and all those fields are open for you. That's a marketing professional, podcast journalist. You can be a YouTuber, you can be a blogger. You can be a stringer means you can be a local correspondent, a district correspondent, or a sub-district correspondent for a newspaper, for a radio channel. They are all part-time jobs, not full-time jobs. Then you can be a freelance producer. There are so many people in India now who produce programs for radios across the world, different countries, uh, different radio channels, or different to, uh, television channels, give small, small stories. And uh, you are not a, f a fully um, full employer of that, that department or uh, that, um, that. For each item you uh, you supply, and if they brought telecast or broadcast, then you get paid for that. That's why we call uh, freelance producer writers. Then social media, of course, all of being answers, I did not explain that much more. Then go, then if you have got a good voice, you can be a presenter, you can be an anchor. Not only really anchor in a television channel uh, or a, a television or a radio channel, there are a lot of anchors for uh, um, corporate meetings, corporate um, general body meetings, and uh, all the different functions in uh, all the hotels and all the um, convention centers, you find a uh, you find a master of ceremony, an MC, we call it uh, sometimes. They are all anchors. They are all paid very well. You must have heard uh, uh, Rini Simon or uh, Sokanya Balachandran or uh, Sunit Tandan, all this. Because, But you need a wonderful voice also along with that. You can be a public relations executive. You can be a script writer. You can be a social media specialist. All these are jobs open for, again, we can be a writer, you can be a proofreader also. In the publishing industry has got a lot of chances. Those who have got a command over language, they can go to the publishing industry. You can be a researcher also. Media needs a lot of researchers to do the background work. Therefore, even they call, they even uh, take people as researchers. So, so to know the background, to know the to feed the uh, the, the, the boss or the seniors, all the inf research, uh, required information. That's what I mean by media researcher. And we must have seen the Prime Minister, President of India speaks many times, many different speeches in different languages or different uh, subjects. It's all written by somebody else. No, no, they themselves don't write it. They have a big band of researchers in different departments. They do the script, basic script work, and only final touch-up is given by the Prime Minister's office or President's office. The basic material is given by somebody else. So they are the work of, uh, they, that's the work of a media researcher. So you can be a web editor, producer, content creator, because all these things we are speaking about is only about, all about content. And if you have got a technically sound, if you have got a degree in BTEC, you can, in electronics and communication, you can be a sound engineer also in a, in a, in a television or a radio, radio channel. And uh, I added something new called Mojo. It's called Mojo, this is called a mobile journalist. These days, the news channels and people are not having a big setup like a huge camera moving around with a, with the full paraphernalia and set up there. So that if you have got a smartphone, you can record yourself, you can edit it. 
you yourself doing the work of a uh, technical person, a cameraman, as well as the, the journalist, both works are combined to another asset of convergence. So many of the channels are using this technology called Mojo, means mobile journalists. We move around because the person whom you talk to also will not feel in intimidated by seeing a huge camera. You may become self-conscious. So you may be you may have you may have a little bit of scare of things in your mind when you hear or when you see the camera. So that fear is fear part is taken care by Mojo journalists because you have only a only a mobile with you and you from from that you. Um, you shoot, you edit, and send it to the then and then you can do it. It's a cost effective method, of course, because of Mojo, many journalists are losing jobs because they, they don't need a cameraman now. A journalist who is smart enough can handle himself or herself as a cameraman, as well as uh, uh, a journalist. This is a new area that has come into this day. We call it podcast. It's something like a YouTuber where where you can brought where your audio file you can download in your your computer, your mobile, and listen at your pressure time wherever whenever you move around, whatever you move around, wherever you move around, and you won't spend you won't waste your time. And these are small small uh, audio bytes prepared by. You know, if I have an interest in a certain subject, I can do a small series of it, uh, probably so three to three minutes, three minutes of, and uh, it is something like a YouTuber. You can you can subscribe to that, and uh, whenever you want, uh, you can lo download and uh, and uh, audio has an advantage. Thing is that you can do your work, and, and also as you do your work, you can listen also. You can make a passive listening because your work is not affected by audio. But your work is affected if you want to watch a video or if you want to watch a, even if a, even if a social media, if you want to see on your uh, mobile, you need to spend your time for that to, 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 read, to read the Facebook or Twitter or uh, whatever, it is, whatever it is. You need time. You need to spend especially time for that. Here it doesn't need it. It is something which you can download whenever you want it. If anybody is interested to have a know more about this course, I have an address with me. It's from Knight School of Journalism in uh, Texas, Austin. They have got a um, course, a short course, free of course. Of, of course, this course is free of course for you. you have, uh, I have given the link also there. You can link, uh, you can click that and get, uh, there are four or five modules of podcasting and storytelling. So go for that. Because it will help you out. Well, to be even if you are, even if uh, you are not uh, going to be a professional journalist, you can be. Uh, it can be a, a part-time job, or it can be also a, a hobby also for you. Now, here I have mentioned a few uh, websites or YouTube channels which uh, I would uh, uh, ask you to tune into or log on to and watch it because all these give wonderful stories. Virtual Bharat is a um, the YouTube channel by Bharat Bala, one who produced uh, One Day Madhram, that, uh, that song with the A.R. Rahman. They are producing wonderful short videos of five to six minutes and uh, you must watch it because it, you will know that you will really discover India with that. If you want a rural India, what is happening in India, you must uh, you must read the articles written in uh, People's Archives for Rural India by Pari. It is run by uh, the famous journalist P. Sai Nath, who is a Max C. Awadi. Then we have a online newspaper called The Wire, which give you accurate, correct news. And there are two websites which give you wonderful stories of what's happening in different parts of India. All these stories will give you ideas to produce programs, even for a or for a channel or all those things. They are called the betterindia.com and India Positive, the Positive India.com. So when you have, when you, and there's one more uh, channel which I have mentioned, not mentioned here, that is the National Innovation Foundation Forum. National Innovation Foundation. It is a Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad based uh, organization. And they also produce a lot of wonderful positive stories. And uh, today, what we need is positive stories, not negative stories. We have a lot of negativity and a lot of uh, negative things happening. And uh, of course, always the nation doesn't doesn't want to know what is happening. What is happening from the politics only? 
the nation wants to know much more than that. So that's what I proposed by this. So, so that's why I call journalism lives where truth lies. Uh, I am open to questions. Uh, so I, I have taken a lot of time. Hmm? So uh, I think we can start with the questions. Yeah. If we can start with the question. Somebody can start. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask question. Um, so my question is that um, what is it that prompts you to espouse the unexplored spaces of the social, political and environmental? So uh, this question is uh, with an emphasis on the uh, pieces on Aruna Schoenberg and Titus G. Ah, that is, a, that is an interesting question. See, we always say that uh, a person who follows a crowd goes with the crowd and he stops where the crowd stops. And when you walk alone, you you are tend, you are you may reach uh, the terrains which nobody has ever traveled to. So every subject has got a certain element in a, be it uh, the story of Arna Shanbag. It's a story not people used to speak about uh, Arna Shanbak's story from the point of view of euthanasia. It should be allowed in India or not. Euthanasia means mercy killing, should be allowed in India or not. So that was the entire attention of the focus of the entire media across the country. When I heard this subject, what came to my mind is that uh, she had nobody alive of her relations with her. She uh, met with a... a I, I would not uh, accident or some some sort of an accident, which you can be called a molestation, some that kind of a thing, way back in 1973, and she survived for 42 years. She was and she was on a unconscious vegetative state for almost uh, 42 years, but she was taken care by people who are no relation with her, who never knew her even, who was not even born when she when this incident happened to her. So what, what looked at me was that, how is possible? Is it possible for a human being to take care of somebody else so well without even a single bed sore on her body? Even if I have somebody in my house who's uh, on bedridden for a month or so, for three months, he or she gets bed sores on the bike of, the, on the bike of her body. But here is a person who didn't have that. So that aspect, I always look for that which others have not looked for it. They always I have, a, I have a knack for it. Look, think, as I said earlier, think differently from the what others think. That I, I am not, uh, I may not be fully correct, but looking at it from the quote, I found that it's not possible across the world. Across the world, it is, this is not possible. Same as a case of Titus G. Whenever, whenever we speak of uh, uh, Dandi March or the Gandhi Salt March, we speak always focusing on Gandhi. So when it came to me, what whether here is somebody who was who was what with Gandhi, and uh, uh, he has seen uh, the entire march. He marched for 24, uh, 24 days together, and uh, second thing, he was the only Christian to be marching with Gandhi. It was, and early, there was a notion across the country even now that uh, Christians did not participate wholeheartedly or fully, or their participation is very, very minimum in freedom movement. Here is somebody who has done, I, I have a point to prove that, yes, it is not true. Way back in 1930, there was a gentleman who did it. So those things uh, made me to think, I always look at uh, from Gandhi March, but not from Gandhi's perspective, from the perspective of Titus who mastered that a man who has really experienced it, somebody else other than Gandhi. 
So that um, we to do all these programs. Uh, Dominic, sir, if you can just stop sharing the screen, then everyone will be visible. You can just stop sharing so that uh, every participant will be visible even, even oh, you can. Let me see. Uh, in, in the same, there is a share uh, button. Yeah, yeah. I clicked it there. Okay, now thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, we yes. can continue with the questions. Yeah. Second question can uh, be asked. Um, yeah, thank you for answering. Thank you. So my question is that, what do you think are uh, what do you think are the skills in these, or especially the school age skills and the aptitudes that? Uh, one must possess or one should develop to do well in the field of mass communication. So if you are, if you are, in a school, are you in a, studying in a school? Are you in a school student? Are you a school, school student? No, no, I just, I just finished my schooling. And okay. um, See, in the school, like uh, I started my college this month. What we need as a school student is that you are not going to be, you can be, you can participate actively in the school magazine or literary activities to be journalists. That is the first forum open for you in the school. Plus, read as much as you can. Read, read. Whatever you get, read. Don't look at the quality of um, the books that you get. You can read novels, short stories, essays. Read everything possible and uh, acquire as much knowledge as possible. And most of the students these days, we don't know, I don't know very well, whether an online or a, or a print media, newspaper, read that one. Some good newspapers, I would say like, a, like Pioneer or Hindu or an online paper like Wire. All those things, read it because reading will give you a lot of information. Your mind will be stored with a lot of information. Once information and things are in your mind, Naturally, when tomorrow when you start writing, it will come back to you. It will come out. It will come out because it's in your subconscious mind already is registered there. It will come out. And any opportunity you get in schools to write an article, write a short story, write a poem, never miss it. And any any forum that you get anywhere, be in the church, be in the school, be in the college, be in the university, be in any any open forum, never miss that. Use that forum. So that you will develop a skill. You don't. You won't be always correct the first time. You will make mistake. You will make mistake. Don't worry about that. Mistakes only those who mistake also make only those who make mistake can only can correct it. And those who don't do, they can never. They will, those who don't do anything else, they will never make a mistake. And they will never. They will never correct because they have not done it. Then no mistake happens. Okay. Thank Anything else? Uh, we can proceed with the third question. Yeah. Uh, my question is that, uh, what is the career scope if I take English as my graduation subject? Uh, English, English. As I, you know, I, I had given, uh, do, do, towards the end of my, my presentation, I had given uh, the scope for English uh, in, in the middle of media and journalism. Besides that, uh, you can, uh, uh, of course, academically, there is a lot of scope for uh, be, 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 maybe a school or college teacher or, a, uh, or academic, or you can, uh, you can even do UGC net and clear it and uh, get a lectureship uh, and a scholarship for uh, higher studies and PhD and all those, those things. That uh, otherwise, I had given a long list of uh, opportunities for a la language. Uh, uh, all the skills that uh, which I have um, said earlier about uh, the all the kind of opportunities that is available for a journalist, are equally available for a uh, um, English language literature, literature, literature graduates also. Another thing, that publishing industry is another one. Um, there will there will be a lot of. Uh, today a lot of and they all like oxford or rupa or sage all these publications they all um, they need people who uh, who are proofreaders who are um, right uh, who can rewrite the script or you can uh, analyze the script and uh, 
Uh, short and described, lot of things are there. Plus, a lot of companies require uh, com the writing the profiles and th also all those sorts of things. They also need uh, people who are command over language and good command over language. And if you have got a good command over language and if your English is very good, you can even uh, easily score a, out of nine or nearly 8.5 or nine in IELTS exams and go abroad also. Okay, thank you. Sir, uh, I really like the Dawn progress, uh, Chorus program and I'd like to know what inspires you and uh, helped you face all the challenges while making documentaries and how you pushed yourself through the journey from uh, getting inspiration for ideas, research, waking up at 4 a.m. to reach the site to finally broadcasting the Dawn prog uh, Chorus program even when there was a uh, mention of technical issues and how you face difficulties due to the uh, unpredictability of birds and Indian climate? Of course, uh, unpredictability of birds, I, am, I'm, I, I myself was helpless because I don't know what will, how will birds react. But the rest things were in our hands because the, uh, we got uh, this information around almost uh, 45 days before the program from the Radio Ireland that you, why, why don't you participate? So we were reluctant, to be honest, in the very beginning, we didn't know how it will happen. But my boss said, no, no, we will we'll go ahead. We'll see. Let's see what happens. We visited the site not once, three times. Uh, the, the final was the final one. We, we reached that same spot on, at uh, Keetham Lake. It is uh, near, uh, it is near uh, Agra. Uh, we got up at two o'clock and, and um, moved to the um, uh, sanctuary and we walked on food so the birds may not even wake up with a with battery, so, uh, with, a, with a torch, so the birds will not get, uh, will be disturbed by our movement. We were even, we were even silent that time. And we, we went and recorded the, uh, uh, sport, um, took the right spot for that because sports were available. In the, it was done in the month of May. It's very hot in North India. And the birds are available up to, and the, the sunrise is early also in India those days, in summer, all of us know that one. So we had to do a kind of, from 4.30, the program began, and it's, we could not go till 10.30, they had six hours of broadcast. We could not do because it was too hot in India. We, we limited our, our presence to three hours, and uh, we had all kinds of mics, we had a lot of UPS, so there was no electricity there. We had Lot of, we carried a lot of UPS, lot of batteries, carried batteries with us, and technical person carried a lot of mics. We had huge, we call gun mics. We had such six mics placed on a on a on a pond side, uh, and each mic has got a capacity to capture sound up to six from uh, 500 meters. Well, such powerful mics we had it. So we laid them on the shore the previous night because that area is infested with snakes. So we can't uh, do it early in the morning. So previous night we uh, laid all the all the mics there. God alone knows which that mics will survive for next morning because some animals can come and trample over them. Luckily next morning and all the leads, all the rawhides were kept on the shore and uh, on a plain land sitting on a floor. We put our uh, equipments. Luckily for us, I would say that the, the birds were so, as if they knew that something is, they were so cooperative and so cooperative and they were, as if they were roaming around us, like a, surrounding us with a lot of noise since the beginning of the show. And the Radio Ireland had told us that we will come to you only in two times in three hours time. Because uh, there are 14 countries to be covered, 25 locations to be covered. But they came to us five times because the quality of the sound we had. And we had a, of course, it, I didn't know anything about birds. So I got contacted Ornith, Ornithology Institute of uh, Mumbai, Mumbai Natural History Society, which was run by, which was by Dr. Salim Ali, the famous uh, bird, watch, bird, birds, um, uh, bird activist from India. It was his institute. They helped me out. They helped me to find out. I don't, it was a tough job because to knowing nothing, zero, we are going to do something else. And we came out to be the best. And of course, that's only because there's a totally, as I said earlier, you know, I was living with that uh, birds for 45 days. So whenever I sing or I sit, you no, know, I could hear only birds song in my ears. 
nothing else because it was till it's over there's a little bit of tension also because we are never done in, uh, in the history of india we are never done this kind of a thing and we did it and it was, then everybody told me you must produce a documentary based on how did you do it that's why i produced a program called ornitho and uh, serenade it was actually a live program for 3 hours condensed into 30 minutes that uh, so what i uh, what all, what you must have heard or what you have seen is that that one which was only 30 minutes it was a 3 hour show yes so okay. my my yeah. my next question is that are you uh, working on any other radio documentaries or anything else and if yes what is it about no uh, no now i am a retired person uh, i am i am retired from service uh, and, and the normally the, pro the programs with an all india radio is produced by the producers themselves we are uh, we don't do much of outsourcing there now i am outside of for all india radio because from the day i am retired i am an outsider but even still my friends call me up do certain programs but what happened was that uh, the pandemic has to put a full stop to everything now uh, there is lot of in house production very little of outside production that is one thing at the same time i am not sitting idle also at the same time we have a new concept called a community radio this is coming up in a, in a country in a big way there is a community radio of, uh, it is something like a, a definition of radio for the people by the people from the people a kind of people's radio concept is there coming up and kerala there are three radio stations are being planned by of course all three by church uh, entities and i am associated with all the three as a consultant and uh, when producing the uh, the, the content part is uh, given to me i have to, so i spend my hours here um, no trying to know the area where where those stations are being going to come up and know the profile of the people there so that i know what programs should be best suited to that area because it's uh, each uh, station has got a very very limited area of coverage you won't go beyond that radio station will not go beyond that so in that area what is the profile of the people i am trying to find the profile of the persons there people who live there what kind of people what what is the socio economic strata society in which they belong to so i can produce programs i can suggest programs according to that then once the program once the license is on under on, on the way only government of india has to give license to these stations and once it is ready we will be i'll be involved in training youngsters like you Uh, for those stations of course it is more of a uh, philanthropic work than a, a work for a some kind of a monetary benefits so so uh, i have a question for you so uh, you have been working in all india radio which is officially known as akashwani so can you please brief us just about what akashwani actually is its working and scope currently in relation Agaswani, we have a motto called "Bhagujan Hidaay, Bhagujan Sugaay" for the welfare of and for the welfare and happiness of everybody. That is the, that is the motto of All India Radio. And All India Radio, if we would uh, brief of history, is that again uh, our motto is that inform, educate, and entertain. All the three things are there. And it, uh, radio in India began way back in 1923. First radio station uh, opened in. of course it was in a private sector during british time and the first 11 13 years of all india radios uh, life in india was very very uh, weak in the sense that some of the stations closed down within a short time and all india radio with its name came up in 1936 uh, since then we have got the name all india radio and 1956 we got the name agashwani that is that was a name given to a radio station in mysore a private radio station that name was adopted by all india radio as agashwani it was early doors known as all india radio or air in one form today it is a one of the biggest largest network in the world i think fourth largest in the world and maybe maybe under a single entity it must be the biggest one also nearly 280 stations across india and across Uh, 23 languages and more than more than 150 dialects we are broadcasting daily broadcast is around 2 uh, to 3000 hours per day and uh, we have a huge archives 
uh, of a minute recordings, which is, which is an unbelievable four lakh hours of recordings, which uh, nobody else in the world holds that much of recording in their in his archives. That's in brief of all in the radio, and of course. Real on the radio is uh, is it is on old radio. Its old form is I must say is, um, we can go, we can say it's dead. Now we are is trying to reinvent itself in the new ways, in the new situation, new background, new taste, new aspirations of the people. Accordingly, real on the radio is trying to change itself. That is that is still going on. That uh, of course old habits die hard. Therefore, it takes it takes time under the government setup. It's almost slow. To get the things done in the right perspective, but it is being done. It has been changing, and I am sure it will come back to its old glory uh, very soon. Because the radio will never die; it will, it will be there. Thank you, sir. We can have the next question in line. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. How should we represent ourselves when we are doing journalism? journalism and how should we use journalism in a good way journalists uh, journalists are journalists you should you should you know, where you are a student of journalism or you are completed journalism you be a journalist you be honest truthful and or, or you must be, must be always willing to learn and you must be flexible all the skills and aptitudes and aptitudes with uh, attitudes and aptitudes which i have mentioned earlier that a journalist should have should have all those qualities and you you can be a, anybody can be a good journalist if you have good a good writing skills good analytical skills uh, to know things in the right perspective uh, uh, be not being judgmental when you when you sub, when you present news in a story form in a newspaper or a television or radio you present your news not your views views are not uh, views are uh, you leave to the judgment to the public the person who listens to it let him or her decide what he wants to listen your duty is to present the truth as it is that's why i said no journalism leads where truth die, uh, lies so therefore be a good journalist and there are as i said there are a lot of wonderful good stories across it so there is no dearth of stories i have come across a lot of stories uh, we had when i was in radio i used to have a program gems of india in that program what we did was that we interviewed people who had done wonderful uh, service to society they were not very really highly known people one example i can give you is that i met a person you cannot even you cannot even believe he donated all his 30 years of salary every pipe whatever he earned on on charity he did not take a single pipe for himself from the 30 years of his service in a government service in tamil nadu he uh, for his own and entire his savings entire his money all his earning all his salary was given for charity not one day or two years 30 years i would say he was the biggest donor in the world other than anybody than even bill gates who who, who uh, gives uh, billions of dollars his name is kalyan sundaram if you can if you i can i can uh, search in the google and find out about this man a langish old man around 80 years old kalyan sundaram go on search in the website you will get a lot of stories about him he was called the man of the millennium because of his uh, donation so there are such untold here and some heroes are untold stories plenty in that you do that that has for the market not that negative stories or negativity which is spreading a lot of negativity in the today media is spreading negativity nothing else and in that you can be a light a beacon light of hope and positivity so uh, i have another question for you so um, one of your award winning documentary is on kerala flood 2018 how yeah. common man helped each other so which in turn is something of my attention personally so my question to you is like while covering such a crucial yet a very recent event um, which gained a lot of impetus through the mainstream media the television and the newspaper media Uh, how did you and your team manage to stand up with with the mainstream uh, media, which stated with both? I don't know whether you know, was the mainstream on those days, and most 
good number of channels. Uh, initially, three four days they were very, very extremely positive. I must say, I must uh, uh, compliment the the private private media when they, not not government media, private media for that because they even uh, forgone. Uh, they even. Uh, decided not to have any any commercials in between the news news hours so that every news every bit can be given as it is so they they had a wonderful social society and in that midst i was there in between and i was in delhi not even in kerala and there was no way for me to reach kerala to interview those people it was it was next to impossible there was no connectivity there was no way to reach because the entire area was flooded including the airport was flooded all trains were cancelled, so there was no way for me to reach here. But we, as I told earlier, we all on the radio. We have got the stations across India. I have my friends, mostly more than official connection, personal connection with them because of production. We share our um, uh, our ideas. We share our programs. Ex we exchange our programs. So I uh, I use their services and uh, some of my friends, some of my relatives who are mobiles to record all those in interviews. So it, it was not done by me personally sitting here, and it is they who did the work for me. And uh, after recording, I told you record whatever comes, whatever because it's, it was more of an a, a emotional touch than uh, the other part. So therefore, I told you record whatever comes. I will uh, later on it will left for me to edit from my own way of, of uh, presenting those uh, stories. Then uh, that's how I collected all information. And uh, there, there, of course, I looked at the, the goodness in human beings. How good you can be. There's a lot of division among us in the name of caste, religion, uh, all of politics, a lot of things. But here, a, a, a catastrophe, a, a tragedy, a calamity that has happened where people forgot everything and came together. So, and uh, therefore, that's why that, that tagline, my mind, we shall overcome, because it got a, it got a positivity aspect in that. So, therefore, uh, uh, the stories were, I, um, it is something like what you call uh, making a screenplay, one after another, small, small stories coming together in a, uh, in a, as a, as a wall is prepared with so many breaks. So, one by one, I, I edited and put together things, and I put the right words at the right place. And produce it, and of course, I used the, one of the characters there, and I, that was the only. It needs to be attractive also at the same time. Therefore, what I did was that the the, the beginning part, the the character, uh, the lady who begins the program, she she is is not not the not the real voice, not the real voice, somebody else's voice is there, because I had create, I wanted her to be the narrator for that program. Because she is the one who got the maximum benefit. The lady who was pregnant, the lady lifted from the uh, by helicopter to the hospital. So I find that she is the right person for me to start this program. So I used her as a, a kind of a, a logic pad to my program. That's what I did it here. Therefore, it is the approach of the program, the way I I I find up one by one stories. It is not, none of the stories are unknown to people. But the perspective which he put in, that also that attracts you. The sound he used, the music he used, that made me stand apart. So that's why that program was, uh, was given the best program award for 2018. Uh, I am yet to receive that award because the fu function is set to take place. Because all India Radio is a bit slow in everything. Therefore, I am yet to receive. The, formally the award, but the competition is announced, and our competitions are all in the other competition, and juries, no one, not a single person from all in the area, it's outsiders, experts in different fields are invited, and they are the one who decide which program gets a prize. Thank you, sir. Anyone left for asking questions? If anyone have any question, you can ask now. And uh, I would, I would, before I conclude, I would, uh, I think I would, there are no questions. Uh, the, the story of Arna Shanbag, which I um, did half the way, I would like to share a little more information on that. 
I have a, I visited um, King Edward Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, where she was placed. And uh, normally they don't allow uh, journalists to visit the hospital asking about Aruna Shanbak. But my I told I told them very clearly the hospital and authorities that I have no intention of uh, sensationalizing the thing. I want to uh, well, speak only the truth. Therefore, they allowed me to, they to come over. I stayed in their campus and I personally visited the ward in which she said they even opened the room for me once to see her. Well, that time she was alive. And um, in their ambience that I created for the without that's one of my most favorite programs because it's so so touching, so human, uh, so touching human story. What was that? I walked around the place. I saw their surroundings. I recorded the sounds from around the place there, where I, where I was, uh, where she was laying in a vegetative state. I, mo I looked at the rooms around where she is, <coughs> and uh, there was a road outside. There was a park. There was a small temple outside. All the sounds that is used in the program are all real sounds recorded early morning and at six o'clock in the morning. I used to move around and see, and so say radio. We have to. I have, what I did was I tried to create pictures. Radio, you have to create picture through your ears because when you, when you hear the words, should I an as, as uh, that image that image should come in your mind. You should see as if you're seeing a movie. You are producing a the radio program is equivalent to producing a movie without visuals. Visuals it's easy because you are you can see. You need not explain much more, but when it comes to radio, through sounds, through words, you have to explain, you have to create a picture. That's what I tried to do that one. So in there, uh, in there, Arna Shanbak's room and her surroundings were seen, uh, I've seen it. I saw one number four, and she was lying in a room on the left side. Therefore, I thought I should make the room the character, take a biography type. The room is telling its story, where she has lived for 30, 42 years. She died in the year 2015. I interviewed, uh, I did this program in 2011, uh, four years before her death. So I made the room as a character only because that room has been a witness to everything that is happening. I interviewed, all, I don't know, nearly 40 to 50 people. From there, I must have used some eight or nine people. So that, that was one of my, uh, that, that program, uh, not only it, uh, it went to international level, but it also, lot of reviews from people who, whomever I met. There are many, they say, we have heard your left side room. That's the word they used to tell me. I used to word left side room, part number four, but that was the room in which she was staying. So we have heard it, and uh, the, it was, I think, at least umpteen times it has been a repeat broadcast in, uh, for national, national level, this program. Almost every year they do once. They said that this program is beautiful, you must do it. So uh, it worked out, that's all. That, that again, that human service, you know, we, uh, I use the word, uh, I, don't, I don't know the word uh, service is correct because I don't have an equivalent for an English, but in Hindi we have a better word, seva. Seva is much more than service. So even the script, I use the word seva instead of service because uh, seva is much more deeper. It has much more deeper meaning than the word service. Service, I could not find an equivalent English word for that in spite of my best effort. So I use the word Hindi itself there. So that program I hold uh, very close to my heart than uh, what other programs, of course. No, that doesn't mean that other programs, uh, I feel yes, I've done something after doing that program, that effort is. It is good. Uh, normally, I don't get that feeling when I do program. But here, I felt yes, it, it seems to be good. I, I, I think I, I can. Uh, it's good. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. If any questions, sir, uh, in one of your document, a uh, Titus G. Gandhi food soldier, mm -hmm. the documentation is of a person who lived during Gandhi's time. Yes. So how did you uh, find all the um, people who would be connected or who could be interviewed uh, regarding this? And uh, what were the efforts you put in and what were the informations you required? Again, it, again, it was a huge task for me. One fine morning in the year 2014 beginning, uh, 
I happened to read a small article written in uh, Reader's Digest, which said that uh, the other show, maybe from 400, 500 words article says that uh, my father marched with Gandhi. That was the title of the article written by Thomas Titus. That's all I had. So when I read that story in the Reader's Digest, I thought this has got a potential for a program. Now, find out who Thomas Titus is, I have no idea. Where he is, no idea. Uh, how can I find him? No idea. So I started searching in the internet website in different ways. And I even contacted Reader's Digest office uh, to find out. They don't know it is somebody, somebody has given us this, uh, this uh, article. And we, we don't know much more. We don't know much more about it. We don't know. We don't have any contact details of him. We have no idea. So then I, while doing the research, searching around, I found that he belongs to a church denomination called Martha Might, Martha Might Church. He belongs to that. That much I knew. That much I got information. Then I knew that he lived somewhere in Bhopal. Two things. He, he, he is residing in Bhopal and he, he is a Martha Might Church member. Only two information I had, nothing more. Then search started. Martha Mayer Church has got a quality that they have got a very they are more of a close fit family. They know each other much more than we Catholics uh, know each other. So I had a friend who is a Martha Mayer, uh, working in a government office in uh, Kohima, Nagaland. I called him up and saying that can you help me to find this man in Bhopal? He is in Kohima. I asking him to find a man in Bhopal. Like, he belongs to your church. Told, let me see, he so told me. He had somebody, his brother was working somewhere and his brother's friend was in Bhopal. So the connection, how it went down. So after 40 days, uh, I got this man, Thomas Titus, is a son of Titus. It's a son of Titus. So I got his number, mobile number. So then it was a smooth part. And the, within three days, I was in Bhopal to meet Thomas Titus. And uh, Thomas Titus had a, um, he, we, we talked to him for almost one hour. We recorded him one hour. Uh, and then his father's story, everything. He had a habit. He also had, he gave me something very precious that time. You see my process, I keep a photocopy of that. Titus had, had a habit, of, uh, Titus, uh, his father Titus, one who master with Gandhi, he had a habit of writing a diary. Diary, not like today's modern diary. It was a diary with a, with a notebook. It was. He gave me 40 pages of a photocopy of that diary to me, saying that uh, this speaks about uh, his experience of working with uh, Gandhi, walking with Gandhi to that from Sabarmati to Dandi. 40 pages of Titus diary was handed over to me. Photocopy was given to me. So then, of course, it was uh, everything was in my hand. Then I went to Gandhi Smriti in Delhi. And there, uh, I confirmed that Titus was one of the marchers. And he was a dairy manager with Gandhi in uh, Gandhi. He was looking at Gandhi's house, actually, in uh, Sabarmati Ashram. And I had visited Sabarmati Ashram multiple times in the meantime because I am a big fan of Gandhi, so to be honest. I am a very big fan of Mahatma Gandhi. Therefore, any story, that anything that uh, Confused with Gandhi, I'm immediately, I fall in love for that. I just for Recently, I wrote an article also based on that, Gandhi and, Maha, Gandhi and Mother Teresa, how they complement each other. So people are two stalwarts of two different religions, how they come together and how they complement each other. I wrote an article in the month, uh, on this, this October, it was published in a UK and uh, Catholic News India from, from Hong Kong, they published it. Uh, I think Father must have, I had sent a link to Father also on that. So that's how, if you are, if you are persistent, if you are, um, if you, if you strive hard, you will get information. So therefore I could make a program on Dandi March or Salt March of Gandhi without Gandhi actually being present through the diary notings of, uh, of uh, Titus and his father's, uh, his son's version. Then, of course, uh, we had, I had a lot of recordings from uh, Sabarmati already with me. So it was easy. The rest was easy for me. No, so that was not difficult. Only putting it in the right perspective in a, in a given time, in a limited time period. That's what I had to do. Sir, I had a question for you. Yeah. Uh, could you please share the journey of your shift from yeah. teaching to uh, radio journalism? 
uh, uh, see, well, teaching, and I don't think, I, I, I don't, I won't say it's a shift. I would say, say I am going to a wider audience because in a school, in a uh, background, when I am teaching in the classroom, my audience is limited to 30 or 40 or 50 students, not more than that. But in a, in a media, in a radio, I am, I am able to talk to, I don't know, maybe hundreds and thousands at the same time. Same idea, same information can be passed on to many. So I continued the work of teaching or education, informing, educating, and all those work continued in the radio from, it has already shifted there, but with the, the wider audience. Plus I thought I can reach much more people. The classroom is confined. Here it's a, the world is in front of you. That's that's a, that's a difference between a classroom and a, a, a media um, job. Thank you, sir. Uh, anyone left to ask any questions? I think um, I think we are done. So I just I just want to take a moment to thank Dominic, sir for taking out time for us and sharing his convictions and clearing our queries in the best possible manner. Uh, thank you, sir, for being with us, motivating and inspiring us to venture into new values. Also, I would like to thank Father Dr. Benny Palati for giving us all this opportunity. Along with that, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your active participation and making this session a live and interesting one. Thank you all. Okay, okay. Just, just one more word. Uh, it was really a, a divine deliberation of a teacher, uh, no doubt. Uh, it was so magnifying uh, ideas. Um, Dr. Thomas sir, um, Dominic sir, so, so, so great of you. Uh, as you have told about convergence in media, we were really experiencing that that so-called convergence in various formats. Uh, words, feelings, expressions, imagination, picture, everything in your words, literally, because you are uh, great, because uh, your nature is so. That is why, no doubt, you have grabbed all these awards. And uh, particularly this session, this My Career, My Identity, meant for a student, uh, it is to identify the skills and all. And it was so clear, the aptitude, skills, and attitude, uh, which helps students to grow and, and, and mature and to become a great professional. So all those things are uh, I mean, narrated in detail, so-called a complete program. I don't think such a, a brilliant uh, entire integral program would be there on, on communication and uh, in, in this topic. Mm, so and no doubt for us, uh, what, as you have told, ignorance is great to learn uh, so that we can start from the bottom, uh, so-called from the raw and also from the uh, very simple uh, to the complex. Uh, the ignorance leads us if we are interested to learn as you have told. Uh, that was a great lesson. I mean, everything, everything. Um, and the way you have patiently uh, experienced the journalistic challenges uh, to gain uh, and grab all these awards. It is it is truly a uh, great and and the imagination, creativity. Uh, we also uh, really experienced a journey from and and, and very simple ordinary people. We are also true uh, students, uh, but we were experiencing journalism uh, truly. Um, the skills and aptitude it required in, in your talk. Uh, really, it, it, it's a great. I, mean, I don't. I, I, I may not be able to find such a uh, great uh, program uh, as many of your programs were simply grabbing the awards nationally and internationally. The same with this program is also for the students, uh, especially for language, then generally people who are interested for media and all. Anyway, it, it, it is truly great to be with you for this almost almost to I mean just two hours. Uh, thank you, thanks a lot, uh, and uh, for the youngsters too. Uh, your cooperation was great. Uh, thank you. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for patiently listening because it is uh, um, solo lecture for two hours. It is too much. <laughs>
for everyone to, uh, to bear with you know so th thanks for listening because uh, listening is the best uh, the first start starting point because you have to be good listeners to be good uh, orators and good writers so uh, best of luck for all of you for your uh, on, on, on your all your future endeavors do well i'm sure you will do well thank you thanks a lot thank you sir okay